the most rewarding championship that I've ever been involved in. Momentum's up. This championship is one of the hardest in the world. It feels like the first race weekend was almost what I'd describe as a winter series round. It was five weeks ago, it was chaos, it was everything trying to learn its way, all that type of stuff. So coming here, I feel like we're coming to a circuit that I know, that I, we tested at pre-season, and I'm a bit more of a, I have a bit more of an eye open as to what to expect, as opposed to when we went to Thruxton, it was really a guess. We hadn't been out there, we hadn't been on hards, we hadn't even been out in the wet. So there was just so many variables that it's nice to come to round two with a bit more, with our feet on the ground. It's a, a real up and down weekend. It's one of those of what could have been if we're not coming here at Snetterton with a huge amount of ballast, uh, 48 kilos exactly. So yeah, it just means it might assist us in qualifying a little bit to get a bit further up to then turn things around this weekend. Colin's always been strong here. Um, over the years, he's shown that with his results. Uh, for me, I feel like we can race our way through. So ultimately, if we don't have that perfect lap time or, or the qualifying pace to be where he is, there's all that, always that element in, in terms of racing and, and pulling it through. And if I'm honest, you can go and win two races, but if you don't win the third or have a, a good result in the third, it, you can, your weekend doesn't look quite as good. Look back at Josh Cook, Fruxton, he goes and wins the first two, has a bad third, and it just massively counteracts what you do. So consistency is key here, and that's what I'll be aiming for. I always think you can get away with one bad race weekend uh, in this championship, and we've done that. Both me and Adam tick the boxes. We haven't scored many points at Thruxton. And even Colin Turkington, let's be honest, four times champion of BMW, he's seventh in the championship after Thruxton, which kind of says it all. You know, we really struggled uh, with the rear wheel drive around there. But now it's hot at Twisty Snetterton, and we've got a soft tire, and apparently, I haven't tried it yet, but apparently the soft tire is the best tire on the BMW. So I'm really looking forward to trying it in one of my races. Uh, this weekend, which is completely different, the rules. You don't have to choose your tyre now before qualifying. This year, you can just decide before you leave the pit box in one of the races when you run it, which is all a bit more of a surprise for everybody, especially the commentators and the fans. Who's got what tyres in this race? You don't know until we're leaving the pit lane, so that's, that's going to be exciting. To me, this weekend marks the start of the actual season. Now everything is in quick succession. Now we get to roll into one weekend to the next. And to say I'm excited is probably an understatement. when people sound really arrogant but honestly I thought I drove really well <laughs> like like I haven't driven good I haven't driven great all day but I thought I actually drove pretty okay there but the pace just wasn't there I think the chassis feels good it's just a it's just a hard pill to swallow because everyone's worked hard and we've not got the rewards okay I'm done I'm done I need to try and take this off yeah, we're not quite sure if I'm honest. Uh, first part of qualifying, we managed to get a lap under our belt, but that got taken away for track limits. So we actually only got two flying laps and then coming, got another set of tyres on. And as we, as we were on the warm-up procedure, there was a, a, a knocking noise. Not quite sure what we could put on, whether you're at low speed, high speed, there's a loss of power as well in there. So it really hampered us trying to get back into that top 10. But look, even if we got there, we still didn't have an engine or a car that could ultimately perform that, them sort of lap times, I'm afraid. Next step now is just uh, firstly diagnose the issue, uh, work out what that is, and then we can actually set a plan 
to, to come back. But obviously, tomorrow starting P16, I think, is um, yeah, obviously going to be a little bit harder in race one, but I guess the ultimate goal will be race three again. Welcome to sunny Snetterton, deep in the heart of the East Anglian countryside for the second weekend of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. But here at Snetterton, the crowds are back, limited in number, but strong on enthusiasm. And as far as the drivers are concerned, for the first time in 18 months, the show is now complete. So we're here, it's race day at Snetterton on Sunday. Uh, the cars behind me are just getting warmed up, ready for race one. Uh, the sun is beaming hot and uh, who knows what's going to happen in race one, but we're starting in a great position in P12. I'm going for the win in race three. That is my plan for today. But let us see how race day at Snetterton is going to pan out because the last few cars come into place, Jade Edwards Drivers now look towards the lights, the five second board is withdrawn. So Colin Turkington on pole should make the best start, but as the lights go out now, let's see, he does get away nicely. So also Stephen Jelly from the second row of the grid. Tom Oliver can't find a way through the traffic in his BMW. Tom Ingram goes defensive with Rory Butcher crawling all over the back of him, down towards Riches. So Turkington leads. Because uh, Chilton's on the back of Robottom, and Robottom in turn wants to get a, a, a way past Jack Goff, the other driver making progress, Ash Sutton, by the way, up into 11th place. And last lap, last lap. That's Tom Chilton facing the wrong way at Wilson. Uh, that was not clever, Tom. There was a fast approaching Gordon Shedden. Not sure if there was a touch. Oh, rejoins and forces Jess Hawkins way out wide. Did he get touched or not? Okay, mate. Okay, that puts you 21st. 21st. So um, let's uh, pick up rubber and uh, take it easy on the way back in, please. Pick up rubber. I've got my first relapse, but it's balance of Sutton can dive left and right, yeah, so I'm just <laughs> understeer, <laughs> understeer. Doesn't matter what I'm doing with the brake and the throttle, I've got a massive understeer. Um, he can really, really, really turn under me. So we just finished race one, uh, and uh, not exactly where we wanted to be. Um, I was hoping that I was going to move forwards, and uh, I just physically couldn't. Uh, with the balance of the car, I couldn't, I couldn't get the tyre to do what I wanted it to do at any point in the lap. Had a beautiful 180 degree spin uh, at the hairpin, which made me go from 14th down to 21st. So that wasn't where I wanted to finish at all. I'm actually thinking the hottest bit of the day, let's go for the softs, because everyone will be pretty much on the mediums and, and uh, thinking it's too hot. So I think as I'm so far back, let's go for a gamble. Let's go for it. It'd be nice to be bouncing around podium area, but obviously with the 75 kilos on, that might be a bit difficult. You know, it is basically championship contenders are all around or in front of us, apart from Drake Hill. Yeah. Um, well, Cookie's yeah. obviously out of position, but he's going to be on the soft, so it's hard to judge how they're going to perform. I'm on going to go for a race, because yeah. everyone in front of him is on, on, the, on the medium and, and a bit of weight. He's in the same scenario we were last race, yeah. identical. You could have a, an issue at the front where the two BMs, they're both, they're not going to be giving each other any room. They're both going to be fighting for it. Yeah. So they could back everything up into the rest of the pack. Aim for a top five then. Yeah. And just click. Hopefully finish in front of Colin, that'd be nice. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. I think we need to counter at the weight, but I think actually... We still need to have that balance for more. Yeah. yeah All right, sounds good. Race one, we've just done that. It was average at best, to be perfectly honest. Um, finding our feet a little bit, got run wide by another car on lap two or three and dropped us down the order. Um, and the problem is every car on the grid is separated by a couple of tenths. So if you lose a second, it takes you 10 laps to make up that second effectively. It's very easy and you see the younger drivers where they don't realize that they'll fight 
from lap one defending on a white line on the inside for P nowhere. Um, and you end up just losing time and if anything, you kind of get cut out in more incidents. So I think I just need to be tactical, know that we potentially have a tyre advantage in this one um, and just pick them off one by one as patient as possible, keep the car pointing in the right direction and yeah, see if we can get to the top 12 and catch that reverse grid. battle commence. It is go and a good start is made by Morgan and also by Jelly. Tom Oliver gets away nicely too as there and Ingram takes the fight to Turkey Chin, he gets squeezed under the grass there. And a very, very good first lap from Ash Sutton. Sutton prizes open the door, gets up the inside as they go towards Williams. Three goes, job done. Nine tenths, in other words, nearly a second quicker than Ingram and, uh, and Jackson were going. Look how he's closed up. And he did that fastest lap, as well as overtaking two people, you know, so he had the traffic to think about as well as all of that. So he is in blistering form, as I say, the soft tyre, no weight in the car, and he has arrived on the back of Ingram. Has he forced the door open? Enough, he has. So through goes Ash Sutton, then up on the inside, he goes third. Still plenty of time, we don't need to rush this. It is not if, it is when Ash Sutton's going to get the lead. He could barely be closer, almost pushing Turkington out of turn three. Fantastic. Great job, mate. Look after the tyres now. Four to go. It is at the ready, and Ash Sutton is going to come through for a second win of the season. Round five of the championship is won by Ash Sutton, but only just Colin Turkington. Four tenths of a second behind him. Absolutely mega <laughs> What, with the soft tyre? Yeah, the well, we waited to see what everyone else was going to do in race one. We sat back in the garage without making a decision. We let everyone else make our race two decision for us, knowing what strategy we wanted to be on for this one. And it's played out kind of perfectly. Roller coaster. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, where do I start? Obviously, just shows how quick your luck can change in touring cars. Obviously, engine failure at the start of qualifying. Somehow we managed to, to drag a, a lap out of it, uh, putting us P16, but ultimately it just make, made Sunday today, the race day, a little bit harder. Yeah, we, we made the best job we could in, in race one, getting up to P11, and then the ultimate goal was to win race two, which we went out and set and did. The soft tyre played a big part of that, and then it was just a case of damage limitation, but in hindsight, it's, uh, it was uh, a much better race than that. Six of the series is won by Tom Ingram, who is absolutely over the moon as he comes across the line. Tom Ingram wins from Ash Sutton in second place. Third. Obviously, to, to get second, come away with a championship lead, it's like icing on the cake that. If someone offered me that yesterday, I'd have took it. But it just makes Brands a very difficult meeting. Obviously, going there full weight, the track really relies on acceleration and, and braking. We always know how close it is there, so. It's, uh, it's going to be a real challenge in qualifying, but the aim would be to shed the weight and, and crack on in race two and three. So, yeah, like this weekend, it was probably a bit of a reminder of what touring cars can be sometimes. Into turn two, someone hit us so hard at the back that it, someone hit me so hard into the second hairpin that it's crumpled the rear boot lid, moved my helmet on my head, and then sent me into, well, Tom, <laughs> in front of us, which ended his race as well but we need to find that little bit more to go from 10 to 15 to 5th to 10 and then we'll be right in the mix. I think it will probably take another weekend or two um, for us to really challenge for wins, but at the same time, there's nothing more that these guys can do. Like the, everyone at Team Hard is, is putting in 110% effort and this will develop to be a winning package. It's just going to take that little bit of time. We're finally into the flow of the season. It's only two weeks. We don't have to wait another month to get to the next race. So actually now we can learn from here, have a team debrief tomorrow or the next day, kind of make a plan of action for in a week's time, and all of a sudden roll into that with a lot more momentum.